A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, he was nearing Damascus. A light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him up by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Anassus. Come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has the authority from the chief priest to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel. And I will show him that you will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me, Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. All who heard him were astounded and said, Is not this the man who in Jerusalem ravaged those who called upon his name and came here expressly to take them back in chains to the chief priests? But Saul grew all the stronger and confounded the Jews who lived in Damascus, proving that this is the Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Good morning, my friends. The beginning of a new week, Monday, April 19th, and the Gospel is from John. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread. When the Lord gave thanks because of this bread, the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God has set his seal. So they said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in the one he sent. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you believe in the one he sent. They're kind of looking for an answer. He's sort of saying to them, you got a free meal. That's why you were looking for me again. So I guess they, you know, kind of were asking, well, you know, what does God want from us? That you believe in the one he sent. It's the essence of faith, the essence of faith, to believe in Jesus the Christ who rose from the dead, whose celebration of rising is just now part of the season that we're in, the Easter season. The Paschal mystery is revealed, rises from the dead, that you believe in the one he sent. You and I do. It is now 2,000 years later, and certainly Christ, we would hope, and I know, center of my life, I hope he's the center of, of your life. The people back then could be given a pass on a lot of that. There was a lot of uncertainty. They weren't necessarily sure that, that th this was the Christ. Uh, even Jesus lets them know, well, you kind of followed me because you got, a, you got a meal, you ate the bread and everything else, but if you really want to know what this is about, you have to believe in the one that God sent, and that one that he sent is me. And I'm sure many of them understood that. Many of them did, did realize that, but certainly not all. And Jesus was kind of letting them know, and in a way letting them down easy, that um, it's me. I'm the one. I'm the one that has been sent. And I'm sure there were people in the crowd kind of nudging their friends next to them, saying, I told you it was all about him. In reality, it always is, even in our own lives. Keep celebrating the Easter mystery, my friends. It is the one whom God sent that we follow, just as the disciples did then, just as those who recognized him did then. So you and I do, today and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. Take care. See you tomorrow. And now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs> 